On this episode of Bondi Vet. I'm really, really worried about a patient. Alison responds to an urgent SOS from sister Audrey. Obviously, if we leave it too long, he could get lots of damage to all his organs. Well, tell me it's good news. <gasps> What's been going on? He bit me. What? Scott steps in to help a bulldog owner in distress. I don't think that he meant to bite Peggy, <laughs> but he did. Okay, that's far enough for us boys. And Tim and the team are on high alert as a potentially deadly courtship ritual gets underway. Of all the animals in the park, she's one of the most dangerous. You make my world a better place. Come on, there's your girl. Saturday. In Brisbane, Alison's just received a surprise call from twin sister Audrey in Sydney. The reason why I'm calling is because I'm really, really worried about a patient that I've been seeing in Sydney who just happens to have just moved to Brisbane. And it just happens that I have a twin in Brisbane that could possibly help me out. <laughs> My wonder who that uh, could be. <laughs> <laughs> the mum's name is Kristen. And just before the move, we were just checking in on all her cats. And one cat called Lenny, who's adorable, uh, we checked in on his bloods and he came back positive for hypothyroidism. So we started him quickly on medication. But of course, soon after we started, they took off and started their journey into Brisbane. Kristen called me the other day, super worried. Um, he's just looking, you know, not right. He's skinny, he's losing weight. So he really needs another blood test done. Yeah. Really needs to check in on his blood pressure because obviously if we leave it too long, he could get lots of damage to all his organs. Yeah, yeah. Okay, no worries. That does sound quite severe. So we'll get onto it today as soon as we can. So this morning we've got booked an urgent case. Alison and Nurse Amber are making an emergency call to check up on the sick cat. So hypothyroidism can be very life-threatening if not treated or diagnosed. The thyroid hormone actually controls a lot of the organs and with the high blood pressure and the hypothyroidism, it can damage important vital organs like the kidneys, the heart and also the eyes. He's a special little cat and mum's daughter Riley loves this cat, so she's really, really worried because they've lost cats in the past. Anxiously waiting to see them are Lenny's devoted owners, Kristen and 10-year-old daughter, Riley. Oh, nice to meet you, Nice to meet you, All right, do you want to show me where Lenny and the other two are hiding? Up the stairs? Hi, Lenny. Lenny came first from Cat Protection, so he's not part of the same family as Snowy in Boston. We've owned him since he was six months. So, yeah, 12 and a half years. He means the world to us, he really, really does. So we want to make sure he's healthy. He's really skinny, isn't he? Yeah, he is. Why well, you've got him like that, I'll just kind of quickly yeah, of course. Yeah. Lenny and his sibling, Snowy and Boston, are an important link to Riley's old life back in Sydney. Well, I'm a little sad because mm. I love him a lot and I feel like something's going to happen. You can feel his ribs. Yeah, you can. Okay. Yeah. And feel like and you can put the spine, your yeah. see the spine. It's going to be okay. Yeah. We've grown up together. It's kind of like a sibling. A little annoying, irritating, but lovely. You're all right, it's darling. Okay. Oh, okay. Mommy's here. Don't worry. Huh? First, Alison needs to check Lenny's blood pressure to see if the medication prescribed by Audrey has lowered his dangerously high levels. You're all right, darling. Yeah. Ideally, I want it around 150. Oh. Particularly with the high blood pressure, when you've got in that much pressure going through very delicate organs like your eyes, your hearts, and your kidney, yeah. you can damage it just from the pressure. 176, so it's slightly higher than normal, than I would accept at 150, but not as bad as I thought it would be when we initially started taking it. Okay. So next, we're gonna do something that's a little bit more invasive, and that's actually taking some blood. Ellison needs a blood sample to check his thyroid levels. So if Lenny's thyroid levels is still elevated today, that may mean bad news for him. It may mean that he will continue to lose weight, that that blood pressure may not be under control. And in particular, I'm really worried about those kidneys. 
Good boy. Yes, good boy. You're being so good, mister. You really are. So while I'm doing this test, you can really see the bond between Kristen and Lenny. They really do love each other and she's really concerned about him and really worried. Alison and Amber are now taking the blood sample straight to a local vet where they can be put through an in-house lab. Okay, we got all our test clips. So hopefully T4 is normal because that's what we want. He's been on medication now for a while. So we're checking whether his thyroid is under control. So today we're going to be running a test to test his biochemistry, which is mainly looking at his liver and kidneys, and also the T4 levels, which is the thyroid levels we're trying to bring back down to normal. Alison, the results are back. Oh, tell me it's good news. Good news. So SDMA, urea, MS. creatine, all good. So that's good for the kidneys? Yes. Great. Kidneys good. And the T4 is normal. normal. This is brilliant news. That means the new dose that Audrey's popped Lenny on is working. working. Yeah. Well, that medication seems to be doing the trick. I'm really excited to go and share these news with Kristen and Riley. They've been waiting anxiously at home. And I know that they're just very, very stressed for his well-being. So I can't wait to go and tell them the news. Hello again. Hello. How did you go? <laughs> is it good or bad news? Are you ready? It's a good news. Oh. The kidney enzymes, so they're all sitting in normal range. So that means the kidneys have survived the high blood pressure, that is which is so great good. news. The T4, that's the what the thyroid. It's in normal range. Oh my Yay! God! <laughs> very very happy. I was worried that it wouldn't have gone down, and the fact that it has is just awesome. And I would expect now that he should start to gain weight. We might come back just to reassess and see if we need to do any follow-up in three months, but yeah. if everything goes well, every six to 12 months. So I'm super happy I could help out Kristen, Riley and Benny today. It means a lot because I know they're very special clients of Audrey, and especially to help them transition into their new state and settle in the cats, it just means a lot. And I just feel like they've settled in really nicely. So, so relieved. Uh, yeah, I think he, um, he's definitely going to have another nine lives, hey? <laughs>
I did feel really sorry for him. He was coping, but I know that they're stoic dogs and that they'll cope with things that other dogs can't cope with. Today, the bulldog is on his way to see Scott for x-rays. I knew I'd taken on something that I might not be able to um, cope with. Let's go and say hello to the vet. Come on then, baby. So Jess, what do we have on this afternoon? Oh, we've got Archie in today. Archie. He's a good boy, isn't he? At the Richmond practice, vet nurse Ryan is teasing his colleague Jess about their next patient. Have you got him out of the car before? No, I haven't. I think it'll be good for your training. OK, we'll yeah. see how that goes then. <laughs> it's definitely your turn. Oh, OK. <laughs> Outside, Peggy and the infamous Archie are just pulling up. To make it easier for the bulky bulldog to get in and out of the car, Peggy removed the front passenger seat. Archie laid claim to the car. I think he must have lived in a car. It must have been his kennel, if you like, because he made it his own. Come on. And he didn't like other people, especially men, trying to get him out of the car. Hey, Archie. Hey. Oh. Just, it's an overwhelming feeling of dread. <laughs> there's, there's a serious risk of losing an arm. Come on. I think we need to stop. Definitely. Yes. Okay. So Jess and I looked at each other and we said, do you know what? We admit defeat. It's time for Scott. Neither of us are that brave. Um, it's his practice, it's his arm. Come on. No. <laughs> Excuse me. Bad behaviour is not tolerated. Come on. Right. There we go. That was a bit naughty, wasn't it? Come on in, you old grump. Here we go. Come on. I first met Peggy and Archie in the clinic and straight away I thought, this is an odd couple. Gee, he's walking like an old man in a young dog's body. Archie's a handful. There's no doubt about that. And it's not just the physical problems that he's got going on, but also the behavioural, the mental ones. But Peggy just wants to do the best for Archie and I salute her for that. She's an absolute star. You're extra grumpy, it just shows you're extra sore, doesn't it, you poor boy? Wow, they're feeling very, very thickened and actually quite swollen at the moment. Good boy. Scott's trying to find out why three-year-old Archie is walking like a geriatric. So what I'm feeling here, Peggy, is just a sort of feeling almost of nuts and bolts under the skin. Mm. It's, there's little bits of bone that are rolling about in that mm. joint. I always think of him as almost like a, a bodybuilder. You know, they go, ooh, ooh, and they sort of, yeah. they, they pump up. Yes, um, yes. And he's sort of doing that at the front. Yes. Um, and by doing so, he's sort of top-loading the front part of his body, and I think that's just wearing him out quicker than he should be. For a three-year-old, I would never expect arthritis. Archie, yep. That's it. Good boy. Well done. X-rays should give Scott the answers. Good lad. Good lad. Oh, it's times like this I wish we invested in an elevator. <laughs> big boy. Come on, it's like Good carrying boy. a fairy rhino. I absolutely love Archie. He is like having a bromance with a dog. He's this big, burly, blokey dog. You got your fingers and toes out the way? Yeah, all out the way. All the important okay. appendages out the way. Good boy. These are terrible elbows. It's a tragic story if we do find that he does have arthritis. Oh. He's chilled out a little bit now, hey? You relaxed? I'm certainly warming to him more now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's, he's a good boy. He's a champ. <laughs> he's just misunderstood, but he's grumpy for a very good reason, yeah. aren't you? Because you're just sore. Scott and Ryan are waiting for Archie's x-ray results. After nearly taking Ryan's hand off earlier, there's been a truce between vet nurse and bulldog. It was great to see Ryan finally be able to see the good side of Archie, the happy side, the non-bitey side. I forgive you. I do. Whenever he's not in that car, he always acts beautifully and he's a perfect gentleman for me. All right, Peggy, I've got your boy. Can't stop, he's heavy. You follow me in. There we go. In you come. Worried owner Peggy is about to find out just how much trouble her Archie is in. This is his elbow joint here. Mm -hmm. And what you can see is you can see these white bits of fluff. 
That's arthritic change. That's what's causing the problem. We've got new bone, we've got bone breaking down, building up all at the same time. And that's that nuts and bolts that I can hear and what I can feel yeah. when, I, when I flex and extend his elbow. The x-rays are concerning. Archie's just three years old, which works out to about 21 human years. It's like a young man, but with joints of a granddad. There's no drug that exists that's going to fix that. What we need to do is something quite brave, which is to go for arthroscopy. What arthroscopy is, is basically placing instruments into the joint to actually clean all those changes out of the joint. Mm -hmm. And I've got, luckily enough, a very, very good mate who is very good at arthroscopy, and I know that he's gonna take very good care of you and Archie. I think it's wonderful, I really do. It gives him another chance, and um, a chance to get back on his feet, literally. Wonderful. I didn't think there was an operation. I thought this was how it was going to be and it would only get worse. So it was like another door opening, actually. I was absolutely delighted. Peggy and Archie are on the road to High Wycombe to see specialist orthopaedic surgeon Michael Hamilton. My friend Rod is going to take me to the surgery and he's got a wonderful car, so we'll arrive like royalty and that's what Archie likes. He likes to be a bit royal. This time, the feisty Archie gets out of the car without a fight. Oh, what a little treasure, here we are. Getting him out of the car was really easy this morning. We had no trouble at all. Oh, what a good boy. No temperament or anything. He just came out easily. OK, so just extension first of all. Ready, one, two, three. Scott's already sent Archie's x-rays, and Michael is now using the hands-on approach. He's interested. And then this little specific test, right, ready? Ready, one, two, three. Uh, hello, hello. Sorry, big man. I'm just going to do that again. Right, ready? One, two, three. Oh. There we go. Oh, still friends. <laughs> still friends. <laughs> there we go. I think that's quite conclusive, isn't it? Mm. OK. Mm. Well done, you. I got his elbow joint there, and I just kind of rubbed it, and I poked him right on that little spot there. Yes. And that little spot there, that little corner of bone, very commonly, is the bit that just sits a bit proud. So if this is his radius here, and this is the notch of his ulna here like that, that should be a perfect fit. If it's not a perfect fit, and that little corner of bone maybe sits a little bit proud like that, mm -hmm. it can start to rub, mm -hmm. or little bits can start to crack off. And when I poked in there, we got, we, we got quite a reaction. Yes. And for, a, for a bulldog, that's probably that, quite significant. That's, yes, yes. So this is a really, really frustrating disease to treat. There is no magic bullet. The point of today was to see where we are. The plan, put the camera in, see what we find. Based on what we find, depends on what we do. But we're not gonna be massively aggressive because we don't need him to start kind of, you know, catching the bad guys like the Met police dogs need to do kind of thing. Mm. We just need to get him out of pain, basically. Mm. Just a bit stressed, that's all. And, uh... Can't wait to get down the pub for a gin and tonic. <laughs> oh, look at that. Flying along. Come on, you. This way. This way. He's a good boy. I'll speak to you soon, Peggy. OK. Take care. Yes. Come on, then. Thank you. His elbow is a bit like an old person's knee, and if he was an old person, um, the doctors would be talking about things like knee replacement. So this is the actual arthroscope, which is going to illuminate inside the joint. That's then transmitted to this thing, which is a camera, so it gets made into a picture of what we're going to see inside the joint. Owner Peggy is hoping this surgery will improve her Archie's quality of life. I hope that I'll be frolicking, frolicking, <laughs> frolicking through the park soon. Yes, I do. With my dog, of course, not on my own. Camera goes in. My first impression, having just got the camera in, is this does not look very nice at all. All that red stuff there, that's, that's inflammation of his joint capsule. He's got arthritis, he's had it for ages. That there, on the bottom of the screen, is red bone. As soon as the camera went in, first thing you could see 
red bone. What you want to see is white, shiny, articular cartilage. Straight away, red bone is not good news. That is his ulna that I was hoping just to see a little crack in there. That's got no cartilage on it. This dog has got really, really severe cartilage erosion. That means that the less invasive options for him are not on the table anymore. The only options he's got surgically are pretty full-on procedures, cutting bones, plates and screws. Michael's now decided to use a cutting-edge therapy. A platelet-rich plasma injection using Archie's own blood will be injected into his elbow. Success. <laughs> Is that enough? What we've done is we've taken a blood sample from him and we've treated it in such a way that we've collected these little things called platelets, which will release these little anti-inflammatory proteins. And we put those into the joint, into his elbow joint. And that will do nothing for the cartilage, but what it will do is it'll hopefully make the whole joint just less angry, less inflamed and less painful. Done. And I'm happy a dog. And a happy owner and a happy vet. It's time to transfer the beefy Archie into a recovery cage. Michael can't resist having a go at his good mate. I don't know what Scott was, was uh, moaning about. He's like as a feather. I could, I could lift him with one arm. I don't know what Scott's banging on about. He's got significant loss of cartilage in his elbow joint. So it's not great news with regard to the cartilage that he's got. So right. it's a, it was a bit of a nasty surprise we got, yeah. rather than a nice yeah. surprise, yeah. okay? Yeah. Now he doesn't know that though. No. Don't tell him, No, okay? I won't. I'm not shocked or surprised. I, I thought that there was something pretty serious going on. Here he comes. Here he comes. Archie! Archie, there you go, baby! Arch. Oh, my little baby! <laughs> So he wins a little rosette for being brave. So the plasma injection, that will hopefully make him feel a whole lot better. For how long? How long is a piece of string? Hopefully, lo long term. He's getting the cut and edge treatment, you know, this is kind of what they do in people. So uh, uh, your job, difficult as it might is, try and get him as lean as you can. Yes, I can do that. <laughs> I will definitely Sorry, do mate. That. <laughs> if you have to see him again, there'll be less of him to good see. Good stuff, good stuff. Thank hey, you look, very much. All the best. Thank you you take care, you. take care Thank of each you. other. See you, Archie. If we can just get him to have his walk in the park with Peggy, that's what it's all about. And I would be optimistic we can get there. And if that needs surgery down the line, fair enough. But for now, all hope's on the plasma. So we'll see how we get on. Look at that. He's walking better already. Yes, beautiful boy. Beautiful boy. It's been two weeks since Archie received his magic plasma injection. I don't know what this plasma was or what it consists of, but it certainly worked for Archie. He's walking much, much better. It's not a permanent solution, but it's certainly making his life more comfortable. There is a light at the end of the tunnel. Now there's some hope for him, and quite honestly, I'd lost hope. I think I'm on my way to getting a new British Bulldog. <laughs> that is very good. Wonderful. I've just had a phone call from Peggy, and she sounds really upset. I don't know what's going on, but something's definitely happened. She doesn't want to talk about it over the phone, so I'm just going to drive straight to her house now, check up on Archie and just see exactly what's going on. Hello, Scott. You all right? She yeah. sounded pretty distressed on the phone. What's been going on? Oh. Oh, lots. He, um, he bit me. What? Where did he bite you? Show me. Well, he was having a sort of choking fit and I got worried and this was one o'clock in the morning. I got yeah. worried and um, I just called the emergency vet. Yeah. A vet nurse arrived and decided to take Archie back to the clinic to make sure nothing was stuck in the bulldog's throat. But once again, Archie's car issues made him lash out. He snapped at her. I grabbed his head here and pulled him towards my right hand. Mm -hmm. He bit it. So really, I was trying to save her. And um, 
didn't quite do it properly. Dogs get black banned as being aggressive as soon as they bite. And I'm someone who absolutely backs that up. In the case of Peggy, this was one situation where a stressed dog bit someone in a point of madness. I don't think that he meant to bite Peggy, but he did. Uh, I just absolutely love him and, and I absolutely love you. Um, you're, you're such a force of nature and, and so is he. And it's just, it, it's heartbreaking to see that, that this hasn't worked out. I can't say... I don't know. I don't know what to say. I just... I love him to bits. I love you. I love you to bits, darling. Oh, thank you. I've got a kiss. <laughs> I knew in my heart of hearts that I couldn't really keep him. But there is somebody who's the right owner for him in the right environment and if if you can find that for me i will be eternally grateful i couldn't admire peggy more but she knows what needs to be done and she's gonna do it and it doesn't matter if it hurts her in the process i'm going to miss you i know are you going I'm to miss, miss him me? too <laughs> grumpy old sod <laughs> Take care. Come on, mate, let's go. Good boy. Come on, mate. Good boy. Good boy. Let's go. I didn't want him to look back. I wanted him to just go out, and he did it. He's not going to miss me as much as I'll miss him. Archie will now live at the St. Margaret's Clinic as Scott takes on the responsibility of finding the flawed bulldog a new home. I know he will, because I know he cares about him almost as much as I do. Come on. That's a good lad. He's very friendly, just wants to say hi to everyone. Next day, Archie is making <laughs> his presence felt at his temporary home. Oh. That wasn't as nice as it was supposed to be. I do apologise. Come on. Finding the right forever home for the exuberant bulldog is high on Scott's priority list. Fallen in love with this dog a little bit, haven't you? How could you not? Look at this guy. Look at this guy. <laughs> there has also been a good result for Archie. A foster home has finally been found. Oh, a big good boy. In two weeks, the star boarder will be leaving, and these playtimes will be over. Archie has been really the life and soul of the practice for the last few weeks. He's such a character, he's got such a great nature. I don't know whether that's really sweet or whether oh, that's really, really disgusting. disgusting. Don't care, do we, mate? Hmm? Don't care. It's been a bromance, and I'm really going to miss him. He's a legend. Yeah, oh, oh, yeah. That's good, isn't it? It's the first time you've been on a beach, I would have thought. It's nice that you worked on your bikini body, at least. Yeah, well done. And the day has finally arrived. Archie's new foster home is in a seaside town close to Brighton, and Scott is taking him on one last walk. Very important that you behave and let them see how gorgeous you are, yeah? I've come to the beach today to just spend a little bit more time with Archie and to say goodbye, really, so it's a pretty sad day. It's your last chance, my friend, okay? So take it with both big grubby paws, yeah? A couple of bulldogs, Archie. I think we're here. Hello. Hi, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. Lou from British Bulldog Rescue is going to be Archie's new foster mum. Um, now look, this is Archie. He loves the car. Doesn't like getting out. That's it. But just that moment in time. The rest of the time, he's an absolute sweetheart. Okay. So, 
Here's hi. the chat. Say hi. Hi, gorgeous. You big handsome brute. I just thought he was adorable. As soon as I saw him through the window, I was like, oh, bless him. He is absolutely gorgeous. Come on then, mate. Out you come. Good boy. There we go. And then he comes out. Good boy. <laughs> there you go. Getting Archie out of the car was always a little nerve wracking, but thankfully he was the perfect gentleman. He didn't put Lou off at all. She seems completely unfazed by it. Already I'm feeling this is the place for Archie. Okay, so this is his new digs then? Yeah, this is where Archie's going to be living. Boy. This is his little safe place. Bright pink um, water bowl. Lucky he's in touch <laughs> with his feminine side, hey? Definitely. This is the garden. This oh. is Archie's new home outdoors. is perfect. So I, I couldn't be happier. I think he's a very, very lucky lad. He's absolutely gorgeous. Oh, thank you so much. Thanks Not for looking after my guy. I You're really, welcome. really appreciate it. It's our I'm, pleasure. I'm really happy that he's found you. Yeah. Thank no, you. No, he's lovely. Archie's future's bright, I think. Um, there's loads of people that are out there waiting for a bulldog like Archie. I think he's going to do really, really well. Scotty loves you. I'll see you soon. Okay, bye, mate. See ya. Surprise, she's popped an egg. Hey, look at that. How long's that been there? I don't know, I wasn't there yesterday. Well, well. At the Australian Reptile Park, General Manager Tim Faulkner is checking out a commotion in the cassowary enclosure. Cassowaries are really cryptic birds and not much is known about them in the wild or in captivity. So when an egg turns up in a yard, it's a bit of a surprise to say the least. Tim knows the egg will be infertile. Cassowaries are the same as chickens. Unless they've mated with the male, the egg is infertile. It has a yolk, white, but no little chick will ever grow. But the egg is a promising sign. We've had the female for five years. First egg she's ever laid. This proud girl is ready to mate. And how's she? Mate, she's prancing around. She's yeah. making herself nice and big. First things first, let's go in and let's find out what she's going to do. I think she's going to be cranky. I think she's going to be cranky too. Settle down. Hey, 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 settle down. Not only cassowaries, arguably the world's most dangerous bird, but they recognise the uniform and they hate us. Every time you enter a cassowary yard, it's potentially dangerous. Their feet and those claws can rip you apart. Oh, settle down, big girl. Look at her, look. Oh, yeah. She's presenting to him. The female cassowary is suddenly putting on a rare display. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Now he's trying point. to be mated. Look at this. Look, these two cassowaries, male and female, live next to each other, separated by a fence. She's laid an egg, which means she's reproductively active. It's her first egg ever. We need to have a look at that egg, check the yard out, and then let them do their thing. Put them in together, stand back and observe. We have to get in. Of all the animals in the park, she's one of the most dangerous. Even though she's standing still, they go from zero to 100 in a second. Despite the danger, Tim and his team need to get a close look at the egg. Watch your back on that fence, boys. Watch your back on that fence. But the male is now also hovering dangerously close. Hey, look at this. Look, 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 look to the left. Look, four eggs. Look at that. So this one's rolled out. We enter the enclosure, walk down to where the egg's laying. Straight away you can see there's another four eggs to the left in a nest. Yeah, don't let it around that backside, boys. Yeah. I don't want to be cut off, please. Maybe she's laid it there and hasn't rolled it in, or maybe she laid it here and it's rolled out. The surprise haul confirms the female is definitely ready for mating. Look at that. She's just done something amazing. She's gone and sat down near the male and she wants him to mate with her. She's soliciting the male to come and mate. We'll get on out and let the male in. It's time for the eager young male cassowary to be introduced to his feisty female neighbour. Keep it there, Mike. Just pushing back a bit, mate. Pushing back a little bit. Just watch out. His, his aggression could go through the roof right now. Tim and his team are on high alert. Get ready here, because when they start running, they're going to run really fast and not pay attention to us. So just get ready for that. OK, that's far enough for us, boys. So let's just hold a line here. Breeding cassowaries in captivity 
and knowing how to breed cassowaries in captivity is now critical. There are less than a thousand cassowaries in the wild and that number is steadily decreasing. If the cassowaries were reliant upon the captive population for their survival, at this point in time, we don't know enough. We're not very good at it, but we're learning. And exercises like this and successful matings mean we know how to do it, and if we need to secure the species in captivity, we can. Tim is anxious to see this pair succeed, but so far, it hasn't exactly been love at first sight. Mate, just watch her. She's, she's up on her toes. I can see how revved up she is. Last time this exact pair were introduced, the male got the female into a corner. He's almost half her size. And he just kicked one, two, three, four. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, settle down, you. We had to get in, break it up, separate the cassowaries, and that's terrifying, and then push the male back into a separate yard. OK, now he's here. Let's back up a bit. Let's give him a bit of space, boys. Yep, quick, Mark. This time, Tim and the team are poised and ready to intervene at the slightest sign of aggression. This could still turn into a fight. The signs here are really encouraging, but last time and times before, I thought things were going well, and it very quickly turned nasty. The mating's interesting, but if we see a fight, we're in there and we're separating. Yeah, she's taking him for a walk now. He's picked up the pace now and he's right on her tail. Good signs. Here he comes. That's a boy. All's calm. Despite their history of aggression, their courtship seems to be going smoothly. Not a lot's known about cassowaries, and in particular, their mating ritual, but what we do know is that the female solicits the male. Uh, she'll begin to walk fluff her behind up and indicate that she wants to be mated with. She's twice his size, it's no wonder he's a little intimidated. As the birds circle each other warily, the keepers can't let their guard down. Cassowaries don't get the reputation of being the world's most dangerous bird for no reason. This could still go pear-shaped, so essentially we never relax in this situation. We've left them in there and it's going well, they're both calm and they're courting. So the female is, is leading the male around and he's now hot on her heels, he's zigzagging behind her. Suddenly, the female makes her move. She's gonna do it. The female cassowary has stopped her prancing and is sitting. It's an open invitation for the male to begin mating. That's exactly what we're after. They're mating right now. That's the male on top. And the female's just gone and sat down. First time I've ever seen it this close. And a far cry from last time's fight. And it's amazing how such an aggressive bird can be so gentle. And now he's preening her. I'm so happy with how today went. There was Mike, Nick, Obi and I, and for all of us, as, as keepers, we love our animals. And to see that is something we've never seen before, may not see again.